Okay, so welcome everybody to the COVID meetup and check-in. Um, I believe this is our fifth session. Uh, so thank you all so much for coming today. Um, we are actually, well, we're actually gonna start with our three deep breaths. This has been a nice routine that we've had for these check-ins. And we're gonna add a little something extra today. Um, so you can keep doing the three deep breaths if you like, but you can also add cactus arms if you would like as well. So on the three deep breaths, you wanna sit, make sure that your feet are flat, that your back is straight. Uh, you really wanna open up your chest as well. Um, we sometimes carry a lot of unknown tension in our shoulders. So take those shoulder earmuffs down and really open up your chest. Make your shoulders nice and wide. Uh, ground yourself into whatever you're sitting on. Maybe it's the floor, maybe it's a chair. Um, and when you're doing the breaths, if you would like to add the cactus arms, you're just going to extend your arms straight up when you breathe in um, over your head. And then when you breathe out, you bend your arms into 45 degree angles, 90 degree angles, not 45. Um, and you make it like a cactus. So you breathe in, your arms go up, you breathe out, your arms go down into cactus arms. So we'll do three deep breaths. So breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. So feel free to become a cactus whenever you like. It's a nice way to stretch out your body, kind of loosen up your back and take a little bit of a break. So for today's agenda, um, we actually wanted to spend a lot of it talking, having you all discuss with each other about plans for the future. Um, and especially with the governor and uh, him announcing the reopening of Montana, uh, I'm sure we're all thinking about what this is going to look like for our libraries. Uh, so we've divided things up into these one, two, three, four, five, six different sections. Uh, and I figured we could spend, you know, maybe seven or eight minutes on each topic for us to talk about it in depth. Uh, I am gonna keep a timer um, just to make sure that we're able to hit all of these, all of these topics. Um, and then we're also gonna have a couple of updates within each topic. Um, but please be ready to share, to ask any questions that you have regarding these topics um, and to jump in, whether it's unmuting yourself or through the chat box um, with, with your thoughts and ideas. I did also want to mention, um, obviously the chat box today is going to be full of really great contributions, but we also thought it might be good to start capturing this in some place less ephemeral. So we've actually started discussion threads in the MSL forum on these different topics here, which are the same ones uh, for today's discussion, but there's also one for lessons learned. So things that, you know, if this ever happens again, we'll definitely do, definitely not do, and whatever we've learned. So I've included a link here, and let me actually show you really quickly what this looks like. Um, and it links to all of these discussion topics here. But in case you don't know how to get there, I can also show you on the MSL um, help desk, there's a tab up here called community. And if you click on that, it takes you to the forums. So all of these discussion threads are in the library program resources forum. But if you go over to the side here, you can see sticky posts. And you can see all of the discussion tabs here. And if you click on more, that will actually take you to all of the COVID library discussion threads. So anything that you're willing to share with your fellow librarians, any questions that you have, any, really anything, 
that would be helpful, please do feel free to share it in here, um, comment, post, um, and you guys will be able to, uh, to share that information with each other. So let me go back to my PowerPoint. Uh, okay, so the first topic we wanted to talk about was staffing. Um, and for those of you who are reopened, are in the process of reopening, or thinking about reopening, what are you guys doing in terms of staffing and how are you handling that? Here are some general questions about this. Um, how many staff are allowed in the building? Are you having staggered shifts, changes in duties, or a continuation of teleworking? Um, and Joe asked in the chat, Heather, how's it going being open? And Heather says, slow, which is better than the alternative, um, which is great. But yes, anything that you guys have to share or questions that you have about staffing would be great to hear. Joey from Whitefish says, same staff, but rescheduling to accommodate curbside service or cubside service. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. This is Heather. So we are in, I think, a different situation than a lot of people. We are in a county with zero cases, and I only have three staff right now, and one is, is part-time 26 hours a week. So we are able to be here and have all three of us here at some points in time, obviously, not all the time. There's two of us here right now, and be socially distanced and manage everything I think in a way that would be much more difficult in a larger library and I'm not sure that what we're doing would work somewhere where there are many confirmed cases. Thanks so much for sharing Heather. Uh, Beth and Cindy from Bozeman said they have shorter hours and staggered staff and it depends a lot on how large your building is since we have to keep six feet six feet distancing at least. Are people still teleworking? Oh, Susie from Great Falls says staggered shifts, vulnerable staff working from home, managerial staff mostly working in the library, custodial staff working regular shifts in the library, and union staff mostly working half remote and half in the library. And Cindy from Bozeman says we're still not allowing the public in, just slowly allowing staff back in. Um, and I think that's the case with um, other conversations I've seen across the across the country um, where staff are slowly being allowed in, but it's not yet open to the public. Christine from Plains said, no more than two staff members curbside service. We put a card out with the items ready for pickup. They are available three hours from Monday to Thursday and still re working remotely as well. Um, and state library staff are still working remotely. Um, I think I believe until we enter phase two, I think that's when we'll probably start talking about not rem working remotely, but. Gladys and Belt says she's the sole librarian, so open for regular hours. Michelle in West Yellowstone said, we've been doing curbside pickup for two weeks, quarantining returned books for nine days, which has worked well. We will open next Tuesday to the public with social distance and cleaning, and they've removed all children's toys, which is, which is a good consideration. Joey says staff is in the building part-time and working remotely to fill scheduled hours. Kara asks, how many of you have staff impacted by the school closures and have you had to make staffing changes to accommodate those closures? I believe Helena just announced that they won't be returning to school and the rest of the semester will be done online. And I think some other areas have also announced that. Forsyth is going to continue online only. Mm -hmm. And so I do have my other person who is full time here has grade school age kids and a high school age kid and she's continued to work full time and schools them in the evening. Okay, great. Thanks, Heather. 
Martha from Imagine If said, Imagine If will start curbside on May 4th, still working out logistics, opening for limited in-person service on May 18th, and some staff will continue to telework. Uh, Christine from Plains said, Plains also, and I'm guessing that's for, um, not sure if that's to Martha's comment or to Joey's comment. Sydney is closed with remote learning for the year. Billings schools will not be going back to school. Bozeman schools are closed um, for the rest of the school year. Susie from Great Falls says, one staff is working part-time due to childcare. Uh, Joey said, we won't be opening to the public. So the fact that schools closed um, for the rest of the year hasn't impacted Whitefish. Kit says, we are still inventorying staff to see who can come back. Susie said they started curbside today, waiting to see about limited opening in a few weeks. Uh, Laura at Missoula said going back to curbside service next week. Okay, any other comments about staffing? Jackie said, oh, sorry. This is Gavin and Billings. Uh, we allow 10 staff working at one time, all socially distanced. We start curbside pickup on, on May 4th. We plan to stay in teleworking during phase one and phase two. Oh, okay. Great, thanks so much for sharing, Gavin. Um, Jackie said we're opening to the public on Tuesday, May 5th with limited hours and service. I think Jackie, you're from Big Timber. Uh, Stefan says we will be closed to public probably until stage two. Staff work at home and in building, limited staff in the building and still answering questions. Uh, Stillwater is continuing curbside, but I am, I am working remotely, but two staff are at the building. Okay, uh, Val from Chinook, we've done curbside since March 26th. We are both working and will open to the public Monday, May 4th with restrictions. Uh, we have a handful of staff out at least part-time caring for children who are out of school. And yes, Connie, notes will be available. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, feel free to put any other questions about staffing or comments about it. Please also feel free to put it into the MSL forum thread um, so that everyone can, can benefit from people sharing their experiences. But we're gonna move on just for the sake of time. Okay, so for this next one, safety. Uh, and again, here are some just general questions to start off with. Uh, safety precautions that you are taking cleaning schedules and PPE requirements. If you're doing staff screening, limiting the number of people in the library, having a separate entrance or exit, rearranging spaces or bathrooms, et cetera, et cetera. So any comments on processes or precautions you all have put into place, uh, please feel free to uh, put in the chat box or unmute yourself as well. This is Gavin and Billings. Uh, yeah, we have looked at looking at installing plexiglass also floor markings to control flow of traffic who can go where um, we do have um, new cleaning schedules for the overall building but also within the department still restrictions on the toys and whatnot obviously we're not open yet uh, ppe requirements gloves and masks are mandated uh, to be in the building we are not taking temperature monitoring. We are still requiring self-report. Uh, that was through human resources. When we do open in a phase three, we will look at limited capacity. We average about 1,500 people a day in the building, so we're gonna have to figure that out. Um, right now, we have not done any separate entrances or exits or rearranged space in the way of bathrooms. However, we are looking at modifying our cafe, our friends in the library area, uh, and then also who has access back into the administration areas, which is where also most of my staff offices are located. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks so much for sharing. And Gavin, did, when you said PPE, that was just for staff, or are you also requiring patrons to come in with PPE no. as well? No, because that's not a mandated by the governor. Um, okay. You can't really do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is mandated to, uh, for my staff to wear gloves and masks. Uh, okay. When we do open up, there will be a social distancing, so I can tell you that my staff will not be behind customer service desks. 
uh, even with the installed plexiglass and things of that nature, we're going to try to have more of an open floor format. Uh, mm -hmm. so they can stay six feet away from somebody, capture their questions via a notebook or some kind. Uh, mm -hmm. and we, can, we can work that way. Um, even with a phase reopening, uh, staffing again will be mostly teleworking. Um, and so just to, to uh, de densify uh, our workspaces. Okay, great. Um, and there are a couple questions for you, Gavin. How are you going to limit entry by on, and only having so many people in the library? And then uh, are employees wearing masks the entire time they're in the building? Yes. Uh, so to the second question, yes. Um, you know, you go on break or whatnot. Uh, I have, so my break room normally holds between 10 and 12. Only three people are allowed in there. Um, different other places are gardens. Um, Obviously, when you're eating, you don't have to wear a mask, but if you are working with somebody else uh, or in the vicinity, yes, it, you have to be wearing a mask. And that includes administration as well, if I leave my office. Um, as far as regulating capacity in the building right now, I'm working with the uh, Yellowstone County Health Officer to figure out how we can control and regulate capacity. Um, not quite sure, we're not there yet. Uh, I can tell you that we will have designated times, um, just for instance, Tuesday, Thursday mornings from 10 till noon, let's say, will be for vulnerable populations to come in, browse, look at the collection, things of that nature. So we'll have some designated times for, for those. Um, and we really haven't figured out what is a good capacity because even if you look at phase one, phase two of the governor's plans, it's 10 people up to 50 people. Uh, we're well beyond that, obviously, even if we say we'll allow a third capacity, we're down to 500 people throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some work to do on, on that regard. Uh, and the health county officer has been pretty uh, open to uh, providing guidelines so that um, it's his order, not necessarily mine, uh, mm -hmm. that, that is regulating this. That's great. I'm really glad that you guys are all working together on that. Um, Let's see, a few other comments. Jody from Red Lodge said, the Carbon County Public Health Nurse informed me that we cannot require um, PPE of patrons in a public building, and we can suggest masks verbally and in signage. Uh, Joey says, we have latex gloves, masks, two UV ones for dis uh, disinfectant wipes and spray disinfectant that's being used presently. Plexiglass will be installed before we open to the public. We will also be de disinfecting fogging before we open. Huh, I haven't heard of that. Um, Carolyn from Conrad asked what kinds of masks, yes, are you guys using like the N65 ones or just fabric masks? And then Colleen said staff wear masks and gloves using only one entrance. Patrons are recommended to wear masks, tape on floor to limit one person at checkout desk. Patrons must wash hands before using computers, only two or four computers available, sanitizing between use and checkout desk between patrons, um, sanitizing all materials. Uh, putting out an extra book cart and having signs for patrons to place any materials they take off shelves. Um, sanitizing the light switches, surfaces, et cetera, et cetera. Beth said the designated hours for vulnerable community members is a great policy. Um, and Joey said some of us have N60, N95. That's what it is, not N65. <laughs> I'm thinking of N64. I don't know where my brain is. Uh, N95 masks that we've had previous to the pandemic and we have 12 cloth masks available and most staff have personal masks as well. This is Heather. We are limiting the total occupancy to the library to 10 people and that includes staff. Obviously, being a smaller library, we can do that. We are also set up with a situation where we have an interior door that locks with a window. Um, and so it locks from the outside, but not the inside. So we are able to keep that door locked, see that somebody is there out the window and monitor them as they come in. People are asked to wash their hands as soon as they come in, and then we sign them in to keep track of who is here, how long they've been here. We are not allowing anyone to stay for longer than an hour a day, and they get one stop per day. I have quite a few people here who rely on us entirely for their internet and mm -hmm. also periodicals so um and people actually have been really not using that hour for the most part they they are getting in and getting out we have six foot social distancing requirements i do have tape on the floor for that um and we have hand sanitizer and wipes everywhere we are not admitting 
juveniles that are not with an adult. I just am in a situation where anytime there is not school and we are open, we are overcome with kids. And at this point in time, they just have to have an adult with them. And we are not masking or requiring masks. It, um, we have no cases in our county and most people here are not wearing masks. So that has not been a requirement that we have gone to. Um, interestingly, we were told Thursday afternoon to open the libraries on Monday and our courthouse is not open yet. So we're kind of in an interesting situation. I, I'm not sure people even realize that we are open. So it's been pretty slow, but that has been fine with me. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks so much for sharing, Heather. Uh, Gladys from Belt says, County Commissioners told me to limit people to 10 people at once for 10 minutes each. Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer is out for use, uh, and they removed chairs at every other computer station, and no plexiglass because of configuration. Connie asked, what are your general quarantine time periods for hardcover materials? Um, Susan from Bozeman said 72 hours, and Kara said that seems to be the standard. Uh, in Harlem, we've put away all toys, puzzles, puppets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Carolyn said, we were told to open, we said no. Um, Chody says, be mindful that if patrons are washing their hands, the sink and soap dispenser will need to be sanitized after every use. In my conversation with our public health nurse, she said we should, we could close, we could close the restrooms to the public and recommended that we do. We will rely on hand sanitizer, liquid and wipes. Cindy asked, can we, how can we close public bathrooms? This is Heather. If I could add one more thing, we are using this as a learning opportunity or an educational opportunity, I guess, for our patrons just in hygiene in general. And we have wipes outside the door and they are expected to wipe everything down every time they use the restroom. And then, of course, the staff is doing that regularly as well. We're trying to use this as an opportunity to educate. Great. Thanks so much, Heather. Connie says, I'm concerned that we libraries are not getting consistent guidelines or advice specific to libraries. Um, Beth says, truth. <laughs> um, and Connie, are you, are you referring to for, from your city or from your county or um, just kind of in general? I mean, from what yeah. I've seen, there's a lot out there. <laughs> so, um... I think, you know, I admire our public health officer. I think she's amazing. Um, I just think that libraries are unique and that we don't, it doesn't seem like, I feel like I'm okay with what we're going to do. It doesn't seem though that we have very consistent or professional advice about how much time should something be quarantined. And we're going with our best, you know, best information we have right now. But when you're in a position like mine in a county like mine, if I can't go with some hard data and some real backup, then I'm going to have political pushback. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I won't, that would be great. But if we don't have consistent messages, I think um, from a different level that can be interpreted for our local environments, I, I feel like we're all kind of are here. We're working as best we can with public health officer, but they're underfunded and understaffed. And, um, and we don't, we're not businesses, we're not schools, we're not <laughs> churches, you know, so we're kind of taking a piece from each of those different sectors. And it, it depends on, also because everything is so polarized, it depends on the, I mean, I guess the philosophy of your local powers on whether or not that is the right approach rather than being some accepted standard for doing it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I think, yes, everyone is probably feeling that. Um, I think Kara did mention that 72 hours seems to be the standard. Oh, so, was someone going to talk? Yeah, this is Gavin and Billings. And I just want to say that um, I, I took these concerns. I sit on the Joint Information Command for the, for the state. And uh, one thing I did bring to the command's attention is that libraries have not been explicitly stated in the governor's orders. Uh, we can infer, I don't know correctly or not, <clears throat> that uh, we could be categorized as a place of assembly, uh, which then per his document says, you know, we don't open up until phase three, uh, but that's about the only guidance. So I have requested more guidance be given, uh, specifically to libraries and museums throughout his plan, uh, whether that uh, 
is honored or not, I, I don't know, but I have taken that up uh, a little further in the chain of command. Thanks I think that the yeah. place, sorry, I think this is Connie again, the place of assembly designation is not, was not readily, you know, accepted as a designation here in Flathead County. And yeah. so if I were to say, can you can push for that, then that's me <laughs> pushing for that. And I'm not really in the position to do that. It would much be much better coming, I think, from the public health officer to me or from outside information to us. What I'm what I'm hoping is that that we will be designated as uh, or that would be clarified. So if we are a place of assembly, then per the governor's plan, uh, at least we have some notification of a timeline. Um, now, of course, the, between phase one, phase two, and phase three is still big question marks, um, but that would at least give us a little more leverage of what we can and cannot do in the way of opening to the public, what services, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Gavin, um, and for giving us that update. Um, ooh, a couple other uh, comments. Um, Jody from Red Lodge says, as is the case when it comes to budgeting, it seems like those in public office who use the library have more sympathy and understanding than those who do not. We are unique re creatures closer to gyms and pools and restaurants or retail. Did you notice that in the detailed plan for school, they recommended that students not have access to the school gym or library? Um, Connie asked, uh, also, are we a place of assembly um, if we don't have programs? Uh, and Tracy included an article um, that matched things she read from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, so for Medium, uh, feel free to take a look at that. Um, Gladys wonders, I, uh, I wonder how my county commissioners decided it was okay for us to open. Um, and yeah, in the interest of time, we will move on ahead, but again, please do uh, comment and put um, things into those discussion threads because, you know, I think the more that we can coordinate, um, you know, maybe we can sort of help with that potential blowback, Connie, that you were saying, if we all sort of gather around these certain um, standards, which I know it be, would be a lot better if there was someone who could say, like, scientifically, with proven evidence, it's this way. Um, but the more that we all communicate with each other, I think the easier it will be for us to kind of decide um, as, a, as a group what might work best. Okay, so for the next topic, uh, communication and PR. Um, and how are you all communicating to the public and how are you letting them know that you're open or reopening or how things are changing what signage do you have, like physical signage do you have in your library? Um, if you have anything you are willing to share, uh, feel free to let us know. Um, social media posts or presence and communication with local officials or organizations, please do feel free to share. Um, and Tracy mentioned the governor has been focusing on giving a lot of local control. Um, Heather says, flyer on the door, radio show, newspaper articles, social media posts, and the website. Sorry, was someone going to talk? Uh, yeah, this is Abby in Polson. And I just want to address what Tracy wrote. And, and I appreciate what the governor's doing, but for us, we're a district. And so there isn't anybody telling us what to do. And frankly, I mean, we have gotten some pushback, uh, not a lot, but we have gotten some for staying closed. And I do think it would be amazing if we could have a single voice come out and say, this is at least where libraries fall in the plan. Um, I was really disappointed to see that libraries were not specifically named. Um, so I think that would be helpful if we could do that. That's great feedback, Abby. I'll visit with Jenny and kind of mention to her that maybe if we could at least provide guidance on where you fall. I know she is kind of felt strongly just because she works with so many of the libraries around the state and knows that the situations are different. She's been really reluctant to kind of have like, this is the statewide, how it should be done. Um, because she is mindful of ways that that can cause harm just because of unintended consequences. But it would, 
if it would help you to kind of say, okay, if you review schools or if you review businesses, that's going to be what you need to do. We can do that. I know she has come out saying if you do plan on reopening, you must follow the governor's guidance of the, the social distancing, being able to regularly clean, having hand sanitizers and uh, other cleaners available for people to use. And then she um, sent me something I had not seen that the, went into the phased plans. And I mean, the governor actually talks about businesses being able to kind of monitor their employees and make sure that they don't have symptoms of COVID-19. And so I think if you can do those things safely, then it's okay to open. And I think she's been more focused on that than saying, this is where you fall, or this is what part of the governor's plan you should look at. But let me visit with her. And I kind of had a chance to finally study that document today and just kind of see where libraries might fall. Great, thanks so much, Tracy. Um, a few more comments. Uh, Rhea from Stillwater, we've been very active on social media and have also been sharing information through the local newspaper. Colleen says, Facebook, website, newspaper column, signs on doors, signs for patrons about placing cart materials on a book cart, not back on the shelves. Um, Pam says, I think it does depend on your library and community size. There will be differences. Joey says, Facebook, website, email list. We do have not advertised in the papers because we do not want to be overwhelmed until we have a handle on our curbside service and book drop. And Jody said, I found the OSHA statistic Joe shared last week to be helpful in discussing with my board and others the need to remain closed to the public at this time. Um, Gladys said there's a neon open sign, um, a Facebook announcement, school reader board, and a sign at the post office. And Martha said uh, social media, print and online news, um, radio, TV, door signs, and our website. Is anyone using um, language like phase one or phase two to let people know that it's a stage thing or is it just libraries open for curbside or libraries open for um, the computer use or you know whatever Val says we are so you're using the phase one phase two Colleen also said yes Dylan says that they're in phase one Connie says they've been referencing the governor's plan And have stages, okay. Joey says, we are simply saying we are following the governor's directive as well as the city of Whitefish. Martha says, we've deliberately not said anything about phases. Our phases differ from the governor's and don't want to confuse. Heather says, we're doing something similar to Whitefish. Um, same at Bitterroot, referencing the governor's plan and operating with stages from a plan our board approved a few weeks ago. That's great. Um, Jody says, governor's reopening plan confused some of our community who refer to May 4th, the date for restaurants as bar and bars as phase two. I will avoid the word phase and instead you use stage or something similar. Jackie said, definitely phase one and stages uh, that can change at any time. No meeting use in phase one. Uh, Cindy said, phases are helpful internally, but I do think they tend to confuse patrons. They want to know when they can put on holds and when they can come back. Uh, I fear that mentioning phases will bring up more questions. Beth says, phases on stun. I found them confusing. Uh, Rhea said, we have not specifically used phases, but the county has an, uh, has an in-reporting statuses for all county offices. This is Susan in Bozeman, and um, we're using stages internally, and we'll probably use that language to some extent with the public, but um, I know we're part of the city of Bozeman recovery plan, and so the city is adhering to the governor's order, and the city plan that they're building, including the library, is referring to everything in terms of phases. So um, I think we might be just a little different in that that language of phase has already been put out in the public here locally quite a bit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. 
Um, I did just drop into the chat box the link to the um, discussion threads on the MSL community forum. So if you'd like to start contributing this in there, please do feel free to. Um, we will be moving on just so we can get to the next topics, but please continue to share um, and put questions and comments. So the next thing to talk about is collections. Um, a big thing that's been mentioned already so far is curbside. Are you doing this and how? So uh, how long are you quarantining materials for? Um, how long are the loan periods? Um, anything regarding curbside would be great. Um, there's gonna be a quick update from Kara as well from, about courier and deliveries. Um, from what I've heard, a lot of people have just decided to not worry about fines at the moment, but if you are, how are you handling money? Um, and then doing returns and checkouts at well, as well. I guess, Kara, do you want to do your update really quickly and then we can uh, address any questions that come up? Sure. So I imagine that most of you are still a ways out from considering reopening, resource sharing, or interlibrary loan, but now would be the time to start thinking about what that looks like and how we resume those services. Montana Air Cartage, our courier service provider through the state, is ready to resume delivery services when libraries are ready. And so we will continue to be in communication with them as libraries decide within sharing groups or for interlibrary loan purposes that they are ready to resume delivery. I reviewed recommendations, which are all linked from Amelia's COVID page, the, the, the KB page, Resources for Libraries. Uh, I looked at recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the Northeast Document Conservation Center, and several other state library agencies to see what they recommended in regards to sharing materials, bringing materials back into the library and safely preparing them for redistribution to other patrons. And so I had a few questions for you and also a few observations from my readings. Uh, I think that it would be prudent to assume that anybody you interact with at the library could be a carrier because they may not be showing symptoms, but they could still have the virus. And data suggests that people could be spreading the virus several days before they ever show symptoms, if they do show symptoms. And it seems like a lot of people may not. So we should be very careful interna interacting with anybody, which may include the delivery driver. But the good thing about the materials handling is that uh, data suggests that materials in and of themselves present a relatively low risk. And I wanted to put a link in the chat here which is a nice summary of the webinar that the IMLS coordinated with the CDC a couple of weeks ago at the end of, well, I guess it was a, nearly a month ago now, at the end of March regarding how to handle materials and put them through quarantine. And with uh, materials delivery, there are a few things that we would need to consider in addition to just getting things around. Um, you're gonna need extra time and extra space in general. And you have to ask yourself if you're really ready to take on those responsibilities, you have the resources to sustain this activity throughout the duration of the pandemic, however it may last. Um, First question I'm going to ask is, do, do you have the physical space available to quarantine materials in addition to bringing in your deliveries? Do you have a meeting room or a table or a shelf where you could set things aside? And it does seem that 72 hours is thought to be sufficient. Uh, the virus is thought to live on cardboard and paper for about 24 hours and on plastic for upwards of 72 hours and you're probably not circulating anything that's metal, but anything that <laughs> has metal in it, the virus could live on that for potentially up to five days. So 72 hours is probably a pretty good uh, standard for quarantine of most library materials that would circulate. So if you are considering resuming ILL, then 
you'd want to factor that, that into uh, if you're sharing something out, it's going to be at least three days on either end of that delivery where something's going to have to be set aside for a while before it's safe to, to send out. Do you have space for the driver to drop off items in a low contact or no contact manner? Do you have the personal protective equipment that was addressed earlier that materials handlers can use throughout the duration of the pandemic? And do they have a documented process where they can process those materials and not be multitasking because if they're wearing the gloves to process materials, they probably shouldn't be doing anything else at the same time. And we also talked about staffing and staggering staffing for that task is a possibility that might help to alleviate some of your space concerns as well. Um, with, the, with the PPE for materials handling, if this would last upwards of a year, do you think that you could sustain that to keep your resource sharing processes going throughout that time? Uh, the Northeast Document Conservation Center has some recommendations about actually cleaning materials. And this is, of course, more oriented towards preservation of materials. And, but still, they said that liquid disinfectants like Clorox might be harmful to your materials. So use that sparingly, if at all. Of course, putting it in quarantine is the best and cheapest disinfectant. And you're probably okay if you just simply set it aside for three days. And UV wands were not particularly recommended because they are time intensive. It takes about 40 minutes by their estimation to kill bacteria on surfaces. And it would have to be a pretty thorough clean. So all that to say that the quarantine in and of itself should do the job of degrading that virus to the extent that you can feel safe putting it back in. Um, touching on the communication piece that was addressed earlier, do your patrons know that they will probably need to wait a few extra days to receive materials once you resume ILL and resource sharing? And do you have a plan to safely distribute those materials to patrons? Can you eliminate touch points like holds pickup? Is there a way to eliminate the need for staff to mediate the holds pickup if that's currently a practice that you have in place? Can you put holds in an entryway or some people mentioned putting a book cart outside where they can come pick up their items, prop open the door so people have to touch the door and things like that. Anything where they're not having to touch surfaces in the library or interact with staff for the safety of your staff and patrons. And then my final questions for you are um, actually about collection development and, and how that touches on your need for resource sharing. How is the pandemic changing your plans for collection development so far this year? Do you plan to shift any of your collection development funds more towards digital? or towards outreach to communities that do not have access to internet and digital services? And do you need to adjust your circulation policies to reflect any of those changes? And if so, how do you need to do that? And is there anything that we can do to support those changes? And overall, what concerns do you have about your library's collections and resource sharing plans? And what ideas do you have? This is Gavin again. Um, right now, we have we have stopped all ordering. Uh, in fact, we stopped it about a month ago, uh, just because of uncertainty of dissemination of the virus through the different uh, warehouses and what have you. Um, we have been strategizing as a management team of just the the concept that public trust is going to be something that we're going to have to grow again, um, not only in the libraries as physical traffic, but People are going to say who had this material before so of course all the cleaning protocols um, but I'll be honest with you I'm looking at, at taking about between hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars of my collection development budget and transferring that from physical materials to uh, freeing uh, Montana library to go um, other uh, online um, resources uh, for the next year maybe two 
Thanks so much, Gavin, for, um, for sharing. Uh, there have been a couple of comments through uh, the chat box um, about curbside and starting that. Um, some people have mentioned that they have been putting materials into meeting rooms since they're not using it for programming or in the breezeway. Uh, Abby mentioned, we've always used a mixture of dish soap and water to spray on jackets and cases and wipe them off. We plan to quarantine and then clean as we usually would using that solution. It won't kill the virus, but it will clean off any dirt or dust. Excuse me. Uh, Cindy said, since we allow patrons to put books on hold, I think we need to continue to purchase high interest and popular titles for both adults and kids. I would guess we quarantine these when they arrive. Um, and Jessica says we bag items and then notify patrons they have items outside. We also use our meeting room for weekly quarantine. Um, for some of the curbside comments, uh, staff is gloved, pulling and checking out holds and bagging materials. Books can be put in the drop box and those are collected, disinfected and quarantined for at least 72 hours. No money exchange or courier. Jody asked, has anyone come up with a catchy name for no contact pickup of materials? Um, They're planning on implementing that in coming weeks and it feels slightly different than curbside, um, which to me implies that the patron would be handed something through the door of the library or through their cart window. So instead they'll be grabbing it from the shelf outside the library. Um, and Abby did share a link about uh, starting curbside. Um, so details are on their website, which she shared the link for and they're also quarantining for 72 hours. Um, so thank you, Kara, for that update about courier and deliveries and ILL. Um, if you have any thoughts, feel free to contact, Kara, is it okay for them to contact you directly? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and keep her updated that way. Um, we will go ahead and move on so that we can try and reach other things. I'm just guessing this, this meeting might go a little bit longer than an hour. So if you have to leave at four, feel free to. We will record this and you can uh, listen to what you missed later on. Uh, so for this section, we have automated systems um, and the Montana Share Catalog actually has a, a few updates. So do you guys wanna do that update first uh, and then we can discuss the group? Yeah, uh, so this is Kylie, your MSC trainer, but we want to take a moment to say for libraries not in the Montana Shared Catalog Consortium, um, the things that we're going to talk about may be things that you want to discuss with your system vendor or if your your library's system administrator, they may be things that you want to um, think about, things that configuration changes that can be made on the system side to make closing and reopening just a little bit easier. Um, we have those ideas listed for our shared catalog libraries, but again, these ideas could apply to anyone. So um, this is available in our knowledge base. Oh, and <laughs> Amelia is way faster than me and was able to share it. Uh, so you can take a look at that. It talks about our services for closing and reopening. There's also a section on specific questions that we want you to answer when you open a ticket, making a request, um, because there are things that we're gonna wanna know. And it's also interrelated that um, it just helps for us to get as much context as possible. So this is things like, are you gonna be including branches in your request for changes in services? Will you be checking items out uh, will you be filling holds? If you're doing so, do you want a hold pickup email? And what would the wording be? Um, do you want us to push out your due dates for things? And uh, do you want a banner put on your online catalog on enterprise uh, about changes to services, hours, or open dates? What would that wording be? Things of that nature. Uh, when are you hoping for these changes to go into effect? We would really appreciate if you could give us a minimum of two business days to complete the changes. Some of them require um, for the system to reboot overnight in order to go into effect. So we can't necessarily do it right in that second, but we are working as quickly as we can. And awesome. I'm gonna That's pass okay. it to Amy now. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Kylie. Oh, back one, back one slide okay. still. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we have switched. We we 
have switched from the survey that we were using before to having libraries go back to opening tickets because the reopening plans tend to be more individualized than the closing plans. Um, but just a couple of things about the system configuration. Um, for the sharing groups, the courier side of that is one side, but we have siloed all of the libraries, which means that we've um, moved you sort of out of the sharing groups. And if you're allowing patrons to place holds, holds will only be placed and trapped on your local items. Um, we are scheduling some meetings with the sharing group members to talk through various issues. Those will be happening in the coming weeks. But in terms of unsiloing in the system, the groups need to silo or unsilo as a whole because of the way grouping works. So we'll recommend that you will all remain siloed in the system for hold placing until all the libraries in the group are fully operational. You sort of can't unsilo just the people who are open because as things move through the system they would get theoretically stranded at those non um, open libraries and then for overdue notices we suspended all notices during the shelter in place order didn't want people trying to re return overdue books during the shelter in place order um, but notices rely on a fairly complex combination of dates and notice counts and other settings. So they can't necessarily just be turned back on when you're ready to be open. They have to be edited and reconfigured a bit. So we are taking this opportunity, since they're all off, to resolve some reoccurring issues with notice configuration in the system. So we'll be working with every library individual as they reopen to go over your options and configuration for those notices being turned back on but they are still turned off for everyone right now. And that's just overdue notices, hold pickup notices are a completely separate thing. So um, if you have questions about either of those things, or if you are reopening and need things from us and haven't talked to us yet, please open a ticket. Awesome, thanks Amy. And then I am turning it over to Rebecca. <laughs> All right. Uh, first, I wanted to mention that back on April 15th, we updated our online catalog server, and that's Enterprise. And that allowed us to add a number of accessibility features for our users that are navigating the catalog, either using their keyboard or perhaps a screen reader. The update also included mobile templates, which will make your catalog more user friendly for patrons that uh, might be accessing the website using a broad range of different devices. This was really timely because um, as more people are at home, they're accessing the site using their smartphone instead of browsing from the library on a traditional computer. I wanted to mention, um, and this is related to what Amelia brought up earlier about communication and PR, um, as a public online catalog, Enterprise is a great way to let your readers know about changes to your service model or your hours. And we're happy to place informational banners on your online catalog. We can change those at any time, just open a ticket so we know which wording to use. And um, please feel free as your situation changes to uh, let us know how we should update that wording. Finally, we configured online registration so that users can apply for digital cards via Enterprise. Uh, the card has no physical borrowing privileges, but it can be used with Montana Library to Go and other e-content vendors if you've arranged for that. Since adding the digital card application to our default Enterprise page, we've welcomed over 1,200 new borrowers. Um, you can see on this graph here that we experienced a spike in registrations just after the governor's stay at home directive, but we're continuing to see um, over 100 new registrations a week. And you can access this particular uh, dashboard, as well as some other related reports from Blue Cloud Analytics. Um, once you log in, you can go to the user reports folder and these reports can be filtered by your library or your library and its branches. We're also exploring a way to add a statistical category to the online cards that have been added during the COVID-19 pandemic so that we can track what happens to these users after libraries reopen. For example, we're curious to see if these users become permanent borrowers. Um, and my thought is that we will share all this information with you via Blue Cloud Analytics. 
Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. That's super cool to see the number of registra registrations with the digital card. Um, thanks for sharing that information with us. Uh, a couple comments in the chat box. Joe mentioned that an alter alternative to plexiglass barriers is that you can use clear food wrap film taped to the ceiling and desktop to create a temporary barrier between staff and patrons for safety. It can be replaced frequently and doesn't cost much. Um, and then Heather said, I think it's best for us to be on the same schedule with the silo and that she loves the digital library card. Uh, any other comments about automated systems? Um, anything that's come up? The MSC staff is here on, on the call, so you can plumb their brains if you want. Okay, we are gonna move on ahead. Um, it is four o'clock, so if you do need to head out, feel free to, but we're gonna keep on going for anyone who still has the time. <laughs> Uh, this uh, next topic is programming and technology. Um, Joe, there's a quick census update that I believe you were going to give. Very, very quick. Um, just in case you have not heard, data collection for the 2020 census has now been extended to the end of October. And so, and we, we didn't do any of the public events that we were hoping to do in April, obviously. So our census champions are continuing to meet. We're actually scheduling monthly meetings now. And um, we are going to be sending out materials to libraries from the Census and Economic Information Center and uh, uh, some posters from the State Library in the next couple weeks uh, to all of our Census Champion libraries. And if you are not a Census, you don't have a person designated at your library, but you still want to get materials, then you just need to let me know in the next week or so, so that I can make sure to add you to the list. So those things will be coming through regular old mail. I think that's all I have for census. Just get out there and get people to uh, um, to complete their census. Anything you can do in terms of social media, using your influence to get people to complete that form would be just great. If you have any questions about the census, you can contact me and I'd be happy to do what I can to find an answer for you. Awesome, thanks so much, Joe. Uh, and we dropped into the chat box a link to the census page on the MSL website, uh, which is also linked here on this slide. Um, so for programming, uh, just talking about meeting room policies, which have come up already. Um, a lot of you have mentioned that you're not having those open to people. Uh, cleaning computers or computer policies in general, make and take programs, um, any of the virtual programming that you'd like to share. Um, is anyone considering in-person program options? Um, probably for, for later on. Um, and then there's also a link here for online digital literacy offerings, which let me grab that link and I will stick it into the chat box as well. This is Gavin and Billings again. Uh, we, we are not planning on doing any type of physical programming uh, throughout the summer. In fact, all of our summer reading and everything else has been converted to an online format only. Great, thanks so much for sharing, Gavin. Any other thoughts about programming? Um, Joey says, summer reading will be online. Mary Drew is working on this right now. Uh, Carmen says, we're starting an online yoga Nidra eye rest meditation program on Monday. That's super cool. And just to let you know, there will be an update about online summer reading stuff uh, later on. Um, so we can discuss that later too. I've heard from a few librarians uh, that they're doing sort of craft bags. Well, they put a craft together and they leave it at the grocery store or something and people can take it and go. Um, Carmen asked, does anyone have any make and take program ideas? Uh, Lori says, we're preparing for both scenarios, I'm guessing both in person and online. Cindy says, some of us offer free summer lunches, uh, might be able to do some distance programming. Connie says, we'll continue virtual programming, no in person until at least phase three. Rhea says, we are planning for both in person and online summer reading programs, possibly with make and take kits. Heather says we are doing online story hours. Uh, Connie is using uh, 
not imagine if, using Beanstack for the summer experience program. Uh, Corey says, we typically offer a walking book club in the summer and we'll hopefully be continuing that with a limited number of participants. Connie says, a partnership with the Art Center and Museum to provide emergency art kits with curated content from Creative Bug to emergency children in emergency shelters. That's great. Um, and Jody shared a link uh, from AL ALCS virtual programming and patron, pri patron privacy. Um, so that could be really helpful. Oh, children are suffering from emergency shelter. Two different things. Okay, thanks for clarifying, Connie. <laughs> um, yeah, any other last comments about programming? Early literacy kits, which is great. And if anyone does have ideas about make and take programs, um, please do feel free to share that in the chat box. Carmen had asked about that earlier. Um, and uh, please do feel free to put that into the MSL form as well. Okay, and Jody says, I'm hoping to have offerings for offline activities that can be done outside or at home. So yeah, that's great. Uh, just to move on, a quick thing about computers and technology. Um, the first thing on here, mobile printing, this was just something that I heard about in a webinar from the Public Library Association, uh, which has been pretty popular with some libraries across the country, um, where you can use this, this website printer on, uh, and people can send print jobs to the library, and then you can pick it up and then like slide it under the door and they can pick it up at the library. Um, so that might be a program you can, you can think about. Um, and then there are a variety of other um, uh, programs that were mentioned at that webinar too, such as providing Wi-Fi at grocery stores, museums, other places that uh, people are still gathering at. Um, so that might be another option for, for some of you who might have bookmobiles and mobile hotspots, that's maybe something you can do. Um, and then here are a bunch of resources. Um, I think Suzanne was gonna chat about some of these, definitely E-rate. <laughs> It's Suzanne. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to put a plug in. I just couldn't resist. <laughs> um, but these are some things that you might have heard about if you're looking for ways to help people um, with affordable access to technology and Lifeline programs been around for a little while. It's a USAC program. The same people who brought up, who bring you E-rate and rural health also bring you Lifeline program. Um, I was wondering why I hadn't, hadn't heard a whole lot about it recently and largely because when I looked it up to see exactly what was on offer in Montana, um, it's like, in theory, it offers you a $9 and $25 a month um, discount on um, landline mobile or broadband, landline comma mobile or broadband services. Um, for Montana, it was just landline or mobile. And um, for those of you who live in areas that are covered by um, Nemont or Triangle, it might help you with the mobile. It doesn't help any of the rest of us, however, and um, I don't know how many people were looking for landline support. There was no broadband providers that were available in Montana, but um, it could be helpful for somebody who qualifies and if you know somebody who can use it, by all means, put in. I don't know anything about the complexity of the program and whether or not um, you have to jump through all kinds of hoops, but it's out there, might be helpful. Um, Everyone On is a website that um, just kind of pools together resources and they provide information access to low cost internet and refurbished computers. And so um, when I looked it up, um, for most of these you have to qualify in some ways, you have to meet certain poverty criteria and come up with proof on it. Um, when I did a little search, for me, it came up with basically the spectrum offerings in this area, which you know, at least that's broadband, it's good broadband. Um, and, but it's a pretty much 
across the board to people you know who have kids who qualify for that now for a temporary basis and there are some refurbished computers that are available there aren't a whole lot available right now and i believe this is um, uh, pcs to people is the program that they direct you to uh, as you might imagine they've kind of been wiped out by a lot of their stuff lately so they don't have any laptops available but there are some desktops um, so somebody might be able to use that as well. I'm assuming most of you know about TechSoup, um, both for the um, discounted software. They also provide access to some refurbished hardware. Um, but this is to libraries and nonprofits, not to individuals. And like I said, I couldn't resist putting in a little uh, thing for E-Rate, my, my favorite program that's gotten a bad rap. But um, I think one of the things that I've certainly learned over this time is just how important bandwidth is as everything's moved online and all of our meetings are moving online. And um, I would really like to see so many libraries uh, boost up their bandwidth. And E-Rate is the game in town as far as providing ongoing subsidies. Um, they do it both for internet services they also provide discounts on hardware that can improve your wireless capabilities and they will also help pay for fiber build outs. So um, today was the last day to file the final form for 2020. So if you were thinking about for this year, you're too late. Um, it's not too hard. It's not too early to start planning for next year, however. And so if this is something you want to look into as you're moving into the 100 meg realm for your small library or into gig service for your larger library, um, talk to me and I'll help get you started. So that's all I have to say on that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Um, any other thoughts about computers, technology, or even just helpful resources that you all have found? Um, anything like Has anybody that? else found some great places to find refurbished hardware and you know to help out people? Because you know, we're coming up with some hot spots, but um, people may need equipment to get on and use those. So yeah, for sure. Okay, well, we'll move on if uh, there are any other comments. I'll make sure to mention them if there are, though, that come through the chat box. Uh, just a few announcements. Um, I've listed here some upcoming webinars that have just come through my inbox. Um, so uh, in our last webinar, we talked about um, just doing check-ins with each other and doing that critical stress debrief um that joe mentioned last time and so something that might be helpful for doing that process if you decide to do that um, is uh the being trauma informed during a pandemic an introduction for library staff um, so this isn't necessarily going to have like not the end all be all when it comes to being trauma informed but it's a great place to start um, and i think it's run by the school of information and library science in either Idaho or Iowa. I don't remember which I state it is. Definitely not Indiana, um, but you can check that out if you want. Uh, this next webinar, I'm gonna add to the economic development guide. It's crisis marketing action items for now and after COVID-19. Um, so that might be something you can share out to your community for those who might find it helpful. Uh, and then this other one was something that Debbie had shared uh, on Wired, how foundations and friends can help support their library. So that's not until uh, May 7th, but something that might be of interest as well. A few new COVID resources that I want to highlight. Um, the Montana Zero to Five organization shared their family impact survey report. Uh, they got many, many responses from families all across the state about how they were being impacted by COVID. Um, and so that PDF report is now in the COVID guide um, and you can look that up and, and, and see what the um, areas of need are. Um, and it, that could be a really interesting document to help guide future programming or partnerships that you all decide to do because um, it really highlights what, what families are struggling with. Uh, we also included some CDC mask recommendations and guidelines if that might be helpful for um, reopening and also just uh, life. <laughs> um, 
as well as the Joint Information Center for Montana State's uh, COVID-19 um, Task Force. They have a frequently asked questions uh, on phase one of reopening Montana. So I, look, I briefly looked through there and there wasn't anything that I saw on libraries, although feel free to correct me on that if there was, um, but it does provide further clarification um, on a lot of the stuff that was mentioned in the reopening Montana plan. Um, and then lastly, uh, an update for you all about Read Squared. Uh, the commission voted in support of um, the State Library using CARES Act funds to purchase a two-year contract with Read Squared for up to 40 libraries to participate. So we have an interest survey here. Um, I sent it out this morning to all the library directors. Um, if your library is interested in participating, please do fill out that interest survey so that we have an idea of, of how many libraries that we're working with. Um, we are still working on the contract with Read Squared and uh, figuring out what training is going to look like. We are definitely hoping to help facilitate that and provide that. Um, so please do reach out to me with more questions if you have those um, and uh, please fill out the survey if you're interested as well. Um, oh, Carmen asks, is anyone changing due dates to 28 days for all materials to make it easier all around instead of different due dates for different items? And Abby said, yes, we changed to 28 days for everything. And just to jump in, that's something we can help with at the shared catalog as well. Great. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, so I realize we are 15 minutes over. Um, this is just now a time for anyone with any other questions uh, or comments to uh, please please share with the group. Um, if you didn't have a chance to, to mention it in the earlier topics, uh, please feel free to do so now. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for coming um, and we'll be meeting up again next week, uh, Wednesday at three. Um, and, you know, Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Yes, and remember the forums that we started in that uh, Amelia showed you at the beginning at where you can continue putting in your what your library is doing and checking out what other libraries are doing. Yes, and straight up, we'll be recruiting from the chat box for people who contributed thoughts <laughs> and ask yes. you to post that. <laughs> In yes. the forum. <laughs> I kind of, I dared Amelia this morning when we were talking about it. I was like, let's see how many times you can mention the forums <laughs> in, the, in the webinar. She did really well. <laughs> I aim to please. <laughs> okay, and Cindy said, having trouble getting to the forum. Let me just go ahead and drop that uh, link into the chat box again. So here is, um, Cindy, here is the list or the link to the um, list of all the COVID library discussion threads. So you can go through and pick. Uh, you will have to, in order to comment, you'll have to make an account, but anyone can view. So, but the forum is a hip and hop in place. So everyone should make an account and participate. It's a party up in there. And if you have an account and then open a ticket, you can look up your ticket later and recheck out the answer. <laughs> yeah. Infinite possibilities. And then if there, this is Tracy and I just wondered if for next week, is there any topic that people want us to cover? If you are still here and want to drop a little note in the chat box, that'd be great. So we make sure we get you what you need. And I will go ahead and, and stop the recording for now. The return. <laughs> 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 <laughs>